The tourism season has kicked off with what observers are calling yet another highly successful ARC event. Captain Jared of Dreamcatcher, this year's winner, sets the pace for us. It's uh, hard work uh, coming across the Atlantic in those conditions when it's light, light weather. So uh, it takes a lot, lot longer to get across than you would normally uh, sort of envisage. I think, uh, I think my wife there, she planned on, uh, on 12 days food. And uh, we, well, we actually managed, we managed all 14 meals and, and fresh food all the way across. So it's fantastic. But uh, in mid-Atlantic, we uh, blew up a spinnaker and uh, twice. <laughs> the first time, though, we got it down and we re-sewed it. So we re-sewed the spinnaker back together, put it back up again, and it flew with us for a few days, and uh, then it came down again. So we've got a Danish flags flying, we've got a Welsh flag flying, uh, we've also got um, Floris here, he's uh, from Holland, he's Dutch. I think we had six different nationalities. Yes, six different nationalities, so it, it was kind of the United Nations, I think. The boat. St. Lucia has been really great. I mean wife and I have been coming to St. Lucia a few years now um, and uh, it's always a great island to arrive at, especially coming around Pigeon Island. It's a beautiful island, beautiful way to sort of arrive and the people are so welcoming in St. Lucia so it's fantastic, it's been great. Caribbean Marketplace is the region's largest gathering of delegates and stakeholders in the tourism industry. In January of 2009, St. Lucia will host the big event. To find out more, we met with Mr. Louis Lewis of the St. Lucia Tourist Board. Marketplace is a major logistics challenge for us. It's the first time it's been held um, in the Eastern Caribbean. It's been held over the period January 18th to the 21st. And um, the main center would be the temporary facility that's been put up at Pigeon Island. You have over 1,500 delegates um, who will take part. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's coming along. Right now we are in the process of building the, or constructing the temporary facility, which is 77,000 square feet. It's the largest building on island. When it is complete, um, we've cleared the grounds, and, they, and just um, two days ago, the contractors actually started erecting the structure. Uh, it was a deliberate policy on the part of the board to integrate the food and rum with the CHA marketplace. What it does is that it gives the visitors an added event. Um, we, are, we, we can now showcase our local cuisine. We can have our... Um, top chefs on display, the local rums also on display, and it's an event that attracts a lot of visitation. The sporting life on a Caribbean island, more often than not, involves water. We met with a young man whose life revolves around a great variety of water sports, both above and below the surface. Um, many years ago, when I was growing up, uh, I always lived close to the beach. Um, I used to pass by the resorts along my side. I love to see the guys on the water doing the little water sports, water skiing, um, windsurfing and even the sailboats, the hobby cats. Um, from there I just fell in love with the job and I always said that I will get into that kind of work. <laughs> well, I get to be outside. As you can see the water is beautiful, uh, blue waters all the time. When it gets a little too hot, just jump in the water, it's all cool, you know. Uh, right now in the water sports there, uh, we're just here to have fun with the guests, with the people that's coming down. Make sure you have an exciting time. So, in turn, they enjoying it, we all enjoying it, you know, and trust me, it's all good. Well, I would um, ask everyone to come down. Um, once you come to, to the Caribbean, right, uh, to a resort, always wise to try out the water sports. Always wise. I mean, that's where it, all the fun is. Guaranteed. If you thought that fun in the sun was reserved for lounge chairs and beach umbrellas, welcome to the Jet Set. Well, first I started with my father, you know, doing water sports and stuff, you know. But after doing that, I really like the way the people move around and stuff. And when I get to find out, like, tourism, our main industry, you check it, I just really wanted to stick with that, you know, and make all the tourists coming to St. Lucia happy. You check the vibe. Yeah. A lot of locals, you know, come in. Plus locals from foreign, they've been time in England or America, also come down and support us also. Yeah. Um, I would say my father, you check it, but through working with the tourists, also they have given me inspiration also, you know, to keep on doing that job. That's why I'm still there for eight years right now. The diversity of the tourism industry is evident in its wide variety of occupations and vocations. We discovered a specialist in the field that's growing in popularity. I'm a qualified bartender, yeah. <laughs> I first started at um, Sandals, yeah, as a cocktail waitress, and then I worked my way up to being a bartender. <laughs> I love meeting people, 
yeah, and it's a very exciting job. And um, when I'm at the bar, it's like I, I float. <laughs> this is what I love doing. Last year in November, I took part in um, the Chairman's Challenge, the bartending competition every year for bartenders from different resorts or small hotels. Yeah, I won the competition and then I was nominated Mixologist of the Year. You have to love what you do, because if you don't love what you do, you don't belong to it. Shane Ross is a local musician who seems to have the formula for creating hit songs. Either that, or he's simply got what experts call it. I want to know, Shane, uh, how long have you been in this industry? I have been doing R&B for about two years now. Okay. Uh, but musically, I've been writing and composing from, I think, the age of about 10. Uh, I wrote my first song uh, way back in primary school. Naked was the, the first R&B single that I released. Um, that song, I think I released that about two years ago. And um, when Lebo, Francis Dilema, the, the producer behind that track, when he heard it, he was like, man, you can actually sing. And I was like, um, I just tried something. So, And he was like, well, let's try it with one R&B verse in there. And one R&B verse became two. And before you knew it, the song was almost a straight R&B song. For me, I think first and foremost it's about self-expression because uh, I do graphic design, photography, sketching, a little bit of painting and basically a whole collage of things to express myself and music is just one of those. And my first major project uh, was uh, a music video for a song that I released in 2007 uh, called Take You Home and that song actually did very well regionally um, it also aired on the international uh, jazz channel, BTG. Do you think your, your music will, will promote St. Lucia as a, as a sort of a destination to come to? Definitely. Uh, for example, if, if anyone has seen my first music video in there, we had uh, the, the pitons prominent throughout most of the, the, the key shots in that video. And uh, it's, it's a theme that I want to keep throughout all of my music to have that St. Lucian feel.